kind of real flexibility in how you view your images, how you compare them, and which ones you select and, and organize and even choose to delete. One of the very large reasons, though, that I decided to upgrade to Aperture is it's, it's very, very flexible and powerful user interface. The devil is always in the details for me, and as Apple is, is well known for, they've made a very powerful interface for um, using Aperture and viewing panels and working with your images. Right now, we're still looking at a very basic layout. This is the default layout you'll see out of the box with Aperture. But if you go up to the window menu here, there are quite a number of options for different inspectors and different HUDs with all sorts of organization options. I'm going to go ahead and, and turn on the inspectors panel, which brings up an adjustments panel with a number of controls in it. And I'm also going to bring up the metadata panel. These are great because you can view any of your images and you have a lot of very, very fine control over what kind of uh, edits you can make to these images. You have exposure control, brightness control. Some of these controls you'll, you'll probably know from iPhoto. And down below, there's also this metadata panel, and you have a lot of control over what data gets embedded in your images. Uh, you can look at the name and the, and the EXIF data and all sorts of copyright information, and, and I could go on and on about this. but. If you're interested in metadata, Aperture's got it for you. One way I really like to work, though, is by turning off this inspectors panel and turning on the adjustments HUD. I really like this floating panel that Aperture gives you because I can place it wherever I want, and I, I can also very easily get rid of it by pressing the H key. But if I bring this HUD back up, there's also a menu up here that allows me to add more editing options, a lot more editing options than iPhoto has, into this adjustments HUD. There's red eye correction, spot and patch, straighten, crop, a whole number of other options here. And when you add any of these, they get added to the HUD right in line with all of your other options. This red eye correction panel also ha happens to have its own floating panel, which gives you a little bit of control over the radius of the red eye that you're applying. But this isn't all that Aperture can do as far as your workspace goes. This window menu also has options called Swap Workspace and Rotate Workspace. If you rotate your workspace, this will move the image browser over to the left and bump it up alongside your project and, and folder list and your main viewer all the way over to the right of the window. This is going to be great for anybody that has a widescreen display or is a fan of that three column view that is, is getting so popular with some uh, apps these days. If you go to swap your workspace though, this will again shift these two panels so now the viewer is in the middle and the image browser is on the very far right. Which means if you go to rotate your workspace yet again, you have now completely uh, turn your workspace upside down. The main image viewer is now at the bottom of Aperture. Your image browser is now at the top. But this isn't all you can do. Let me get my workspace back to uh, what I would consider normal here. You can also customize every other piece of this workspace. I'm going to shut off my vaults panel. I'm going to go up to the window menu and turn off the control bar at the bottom of the display. And you can even get rid of this toolbar. So you can really turn Aperture into exactly what you want, uh, depending on how you like to work. And you can even go full screen, so you only have exactly what you need. You have a uh, slim toolbar up at the top of the display that you can pin so it always stays open, or you can get rid of it. And you also have access to what is called the, the loop in this view as you have with every other view. And this is a really impressive tool that allows you to, to zoom real, real close in on images and take a look at, at uh, the very fine detail of these images instead of zooming in on the image and uh, reorienting, reorienting your entire view of that image. You can either access that tool from uh, that loop button in Aperture's interface, or you can simply press the tilde key to uh, toggle it. And I'm going to go ahead and press the F key to get out of the full screen mode. And I am going to put my aperture back to normal so we're all on the same page. 
Now, one of the last things I want to show you about how flexible Apple Aperture's workspace is, is how powerful this image browser down below can actually get for you. By default, you can look at any one project or one album at a time where you get a browser down below and a viewer up top. But if you hold the command key while selecting another album or a project, you can open a second tab in this image browser here. As you can see, I now have a new tab for the project I just selected holding the command key, but I also have the old project that I've been looking at. The beauty here is that these projects and these separate tabs uh, in the browser will stay open between the, your runs of Aperture. So if I quit Aperture right now, went and did some other work, even if I restarted and I opened Aperture back up, these tabs would open right up and I could get back to work on these two projects. This gets even more powerful, however, if you hold the Option key instead of the Command key. I'm going to go ahead and select another project holding the Option key. And now I have two separate browsers down here. You'll see a bar between the two right here, and I can now see the first project I've been working on, which is a friend's wedding, and this second project here, which is another friend's barbecue that they had. I can browse these two projects independently of each other, and I can even select images from each of these projects to view in the viewer at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and select one image from my friend's wedding, and then an image from my friend's barbecue. Now I can view them both at the same time in the uh, image viewer here. I could bring up the HUD, I can start making adjustments to both of them. I could start comparing images or doing whatever I want. So there's a lot of flexibility for, for viewing more than one project, more than one folder at a time. And again, this split browser will stay open between uh, sessions of working in Aperture. Now one of the last things I want to show you, which is uh, actually a, a pretty new concept to me since I'm not a professional photographer, is something called a light table. What you can do is select a number of images in a, uh, a project. I'm going to select a, a couple more of these here. Um, just find a few that, uh, that I like from my friend's wedding. And I'm going to go up to this projects menu right at the top of your projects display and I'm going to choose New Light Table from Selection. Now what this does is it opens something called a light table, and as you can see it has a fairly unique icon in the project list, and I have a number of images down here in my browser. What you can do with a light table is drag images to it in sort of a freeform manner. You can drag whatever images you, you have brought over into the light table, and you can resize them however you want. Hovering your mouse over an image gives you a bounding box, and you can stretch it to whatever size you like. You can overlap these images. They're not organized by alphabetical names or anything. And you can also make this light table as large as you want. As you can see, I have a, bounding, I have a, a set of bounding borders here, but if I start dragging one of these images outside of those borders, Aperture simply makes the light table larger for me, so I can place this image anywhere I want. Now, if your light table gets a little large and you have images scattered all over the place, you can easily get back to a bird's eye view by right clicking on the light table and choosing zoom to fit. This will zoom out and show you the entire light table and where all of your pictures are. You can keep moving them around, you can keep stretching them out and resizing them, lay them over each other, whatever you want to do. So this is a really handy free form tool for for viewing a number of images at once, maybe comparing them alongside each other in different sizes. Again, I can bring up the adjustments HUD and actually start making adjustments to any of these pictures while they're sitting on the light table. So there's a lot of power here and flexibility so you're not limited to a uniform browser list or anything like that. This about wraps up what I wanted to show you in Aperture, but there is, is definitely so much more. As you can see along the toolbar here, Aperture has smart albums. It offers a very, very powerful search method for your library. You have uh, ratings. You can even search for images that are taken on a certain calendar day. You can add a lot of criteria to search by, and it has a very, very powerful and fast search method. You can create books, smart albums, web galleries. You can instantly email copies of your images, just like with iPhoto. There's a lot more power here, and there is fortunately a quick reference manual if you're a keyboard shortcut junkie, because they list just about everything you can do via the keyboard 
uh, in a PDF that is accessible from the help menu in Aperture. So I highly recommend Aperture personally, and I'm not even that professional of a photographer. I definitely don't know everything Aperture is capable of, but I certainly found enough that made it worth uh, my time to upgrade to uh, for more power and more flexibility in Apple's professional photography tool. And that's going to be about it for TWA podcast number 25. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again soon.